Hi everybody, I'm Vespers. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to create layered percussion samples in Live and a unique way as far as how to be able to switch between them very very quickly. Now this is in response to a question that I get from a lot of my students which is how do you, you know, what effects do I use to get my percussion to sound really really fat and a lot of them think that it's some mysterious combination of compression and distortion and limiting and one of the big myths that I'd like to dispel is that effects can never make up for properly chosen percussion samples in the first place and if you're choosing your percussion samples well and you spend a lot of time selecting the sounds you're using you shouldn't need to use tons of compression and distortion and limiting uh, that being said, all of those effects are good tools to use, especially in dance music where we want really loud sounding beats. But, again, I'd like to reiterate, no amount of effects are going to make up for a crappy, floppy sounding sample to begin with. So one of the keys to be able to get the right percussion sounds is to have a way of switching between your sounds very, very quickly. The more you have to browse through sample libraries and manually drag samples in, the less likely you're going to be to find the perfect sample for your application. So at the very beginning, we're going to be using MIDI. I use MIDI rather than audio because if you're doing your percussion in audio, then it becomes very, very difficult to make any changes down the road. And every time you have to drag samples manually in, you're pretty much stuck with them unless you want to drag new samples in and program the beat all the way again from scratch. So MIDI is, in my opinion, definitely the way to go because you can literally just swap out the audio file in a sampler or drum rack and very quickly get a new sound. But I want to take it a step further because um, I'll say I use drum racks to program all of my percussion. However, drum racks, again, even with their hot swap feature, requires a lot of browsing through sample libraries to find the right sample. And you're not able to do it very quickly or easily. So we're going to use a unique technique here in Ableton Sampler. So first of all, you need to have Sampler. Sampler does not come with Live, the stock version of Live. You need to either have Suite 8 or you need to have purchased Sampler. I'm a huge proponent of Sampler. I think it's an awesome instrument, so definitely worth the money to go out and get it. So we're just going to go up to our browser, down to Instruments, and we're going to grab a Sampler, and we're going to throw it onto our MIDI track here. Now if we go down into the Sampler, you can see there's an area where we can drop samples. Now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to browse to my sample libraries and I'm going to go into one of the sample packs I have here and I'm going to grab a kick drum sample. Now normally with a sampler what you do is you just drag this in and you'd have one kick drum sample sitting in your sampler and if you were programming it and you wanted to select another sample and put it in you'd have to swap the sample out. Now the beautiful thing about sampler which is different from the simplers which are in the drum racks is that you can load multiple samples in them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to select all of these samples, the entire folder of bass drum samples. As you can see here we have 237 samples and we're going to take this entire amount and we're going to drop them into our sampler window. And You can see now it says 238 samples selected. If we click on the Zone button here, we'll now be able to see all of the different samples. Now if we play this, they're all going to be playing at the same time, which is definitely not something we want. And also, because they're all laid out on the keyboard, if we play a key down low on the keyboard, it's going to be pitching our samples. So the very first thing we want to be doing is, in Sampler, there's this parameter right here called Scale. And if you hover your mouse over it, you can see over on the, um, the info view on the left, you can see that what this does is it will indicate the degree to which samples are pitched based on the incoming keyboard notes. So if we want all the samples to play at their default pitch, we just click in here and we go to zero. So this means that no matter what key on the keyboard is played, the sample that's being played will play at its default pitch. Very important for percussion. Now we're going to go up here, we're going to click on the selector, the chain selector. As you can see, each sample is taking up the full range of the chain selector. But what we want is we want to be able to use the chain selector to select what sample's playing. So we control or right click in the area where you see the blue bars here, and we select distribute ranges equally. What this does now 
is it means that each sample has its own discrete range and you can move the sample selector in between them. So now only one sample is going to be playing at a time. Now when you do this, it's important that all of the samples are selected. And you can do that by shift clicking if for some reason you haven't, uh, you've, you've clicked off of the samples and only one's lit up. So you have to have all of these lit up to be able to do this, just so you know. Okay, now what we can do is instead of moving this chain selector manually, we can take it and MIDI map it. So you, you enter MIDI mapping mode by pressing MIDI mapping up here or by pressing Command and M or Control M on a PC. And click on the MIDI map or click on the chain selector and then twist a knob on our MIDI controller. In this case, I'm using a Akai MPD32 drum pad controller. And then we exit MIDI mapping mode. Now, you can see when I move the knob, our chain selector is moving. This is a very, very easy way to browse through samples super quickly. Now that we have this set up, we're going to save this instrument so I can use it for the future because I don't want to go over this every single time that I need to create a percussion sample. So I'm going to go and click on the Save Instrument, and now it gives me the ability to name this. So I'm going to call this VEE Kick Drum Samples. <laughs> 